Hello everyone, today we are going to take a detailed look at how to use the BMI sensor with both iTunes and SPI protocols and how to connect it to the SCM32F microcontroller. Here is what we will cover in this video. Connections between the SCM32F and the sensor, USB beam, micro connection, regulator circuit, SWD connector and of course we will go over the SPI and I2C connections based on the sensor's datasheet. Let's start with the SCM32. We use decoupling capacitors to filter the power lines and power the microcontroller properly. The end reset pin is connected to the ground through a 100 nanofarad capacitor. The boot zero pin is connected to boot switch through a 10 k resistor. This allows us to upload code easily. We have also added a 16 MHz crystal oscillator to the circuit. Now let's move on to the sensor connections. We will go into detail later with the BMI sensor, interrupt pins, I2 and SPI pins referring to direct to the datasheet. You can also check which pins are used to STM32 via STM32 cube ID or from the datasheet. A quick as for the regulator section, we are using a simple microchip 5504 fixed 3.3 volt regulator. It converts to 5V from USB down to 3.3V and that is added to indicate that board is powered. The USB beam micro connection is wired with 220 ohm resistors to the required pins. Now let's take a look at the BMI datasheet. We will follow the typical application section from the datasheet and apply the same design to our own circuit. For SPI protocol, 100 nanofarad decoupling capacitors are added to the voltage and voltage I/O pins. Axial chip select, gyro chip select, and the SPI pins are connected accordingly. Interrupt pins are also included in the design. For I2C protocol, again decoupling capacitors, interrupt pins, serial clock and serial data pins are added. We have used 4.7 kilo ohm pull up resistors on the I2C lines. Finally, the board includes four mounting holes. In the next part of the video, we will review the PCB design and take a look at this 3D view. Let's get started. Alright, as you can see this is overall PCB design. Let's first disable the ground polygon to get a clearer view of the layout. We will start with the USB section. I connected the voltage bus line through a polygon port to both a capacitor and the voltage regulator. This approach improves both voltage dissipation and thermal dissipation. The USB data lines are routed as a differential pair, going through 220 ohm resistors and then directly into the microcontroller. That completes the USB section. As for the regulator, the voltage bus line we mentioned earlier goes into the microchip regulator. The output 3.3V passes through a capacitor and is distributed to the rest of the board. I use 3 vias at this point to ensure better current flow and reduce impedance. Just to the left of the regulator, there is a resistor and LED, which will light up when the board is powered and for visual confirmation. To the right, of the regulator, we have placed an SWD programming connector. Part 3.3V, switch clock, and switch devo and ground are all properly connected. Now moving to the top of the board. Here we have the crystal oscillator. It's placed a bit far from the microcontroller, but I don't expect any issues. Right here you can see that an reset pin is connected to a 100 nanofarad capacitor going to ground. The decoupling capacitor are located very really close to the microcontroller, which helps reduce noise and stabilize the power lines. The boot button is connected through a 10 kilo resistor and then to the boot zero pin. Now, let's go over the sensor connections, starting with the SPI interface for the BMI sensor. SPI signals 
chip select lines, interrupt pins and decoupling capacitors all properly connected. For the I2C connection, we first have the serial clock and serial data lines, each with a 4.7 kilo ohm plug resistor. These lines are then connected to the microcontroller. Just like in the SPI setup, we also connect to the interrupt pins and address selection pins for both the accelerometer and gyroscope. Finally, the decoupling capacitors are in place here as well. Throughout the board, I have added multiple ground vias to help with thermal dissipation and EMI performance. Once all connections are complete, we pour the ground polygon back in. The board outline might look at a bit unconventional, but it works just fine. Now, let's move on to the 3D view. I will even run a little ray tracing for you. Please bear with me, my computer might be a bit slow. Thank you for watching the video. If you notice any mistakes, feel free to let me know in the comments. Your feedback is always welcome. Don't forget to like the video and leave a comment. See you in the next one and happy building.